Welcome back to Unmute It. I'm your host, Judge E.J. Russell. Thank you so much for joining us and continuing along with us today. Now, in this segment, we're gonna talk a little bit about the fact that the Mississippi legislature gaveled in at noon on Tuesday of this week, all 174 members were sworn in uh, 52 members of the Senate and 122 members of the House. They also um, elected their leadership or swore in their leadership. And Jason White uh, is the new Speaker of the House following the retirement of Representative Philip Gunn. Now, Jason White has already made my eyebrows go up when he said that because of the majorities in both the Mississippi Senate and the Mississippi House, that Republicans had the power to take this state anywhere they wanted it to go. Now, for me, understanding that most of those Republicans in the Mississippi legislature are I, I don't even know what the word is, but they are rabbit supporters for the former president, number 45. I, I just don't know where they want to take us. Are we going to be speaking Japanese or Chinese or Russian or some new language that has been created? But then in a, another announcement, he said he's encouraging all of the members to keep an open mind and to be able to work across party lines. So I'm not sure how I feel about the con what I see as a conflict in statements because so much that comes before the legislature is not for all of the people of Mississippi. They are strictly for that super majority that they've got in the House of Representatives and in the Mississippi Senate. Now, this year is a new year. All of those legislators were reelected or are elected for uh, their beginning term. Of course, that means that it's going to be four months in Jackson, four months. Normally, there's a 90-day session for the next uh, two, three, and four years of this new legislature. They will be in town for 90 days for this first legislative session because they have to learn where the bathroom is. You know, they've got to learn the rules because both chambers would have adopted their own operational rules on Tuesday. So it gives them a time to become acclimated to the process being on time. And with the legislative sessions, on time means a little bit early because the gavel is going down at whatever time they have agreed to convene for that session. Additionally, they all have been given certain parking spaces. Usually it's based on seniority, but if you are uh, in a leadership role, that may vary just a little bit, but they are there. Uh, you have to look online. You can go to uh, legislature.ms.gov, legislature.ms.gov. You can see over the next several days how the committees will be configured because those appointments will have to be made by both the speaker and by the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governor, while elected statewide, uh, serves as the president of the Senate. So he will have the responsibility of making those committee appointments assigning our chairman for those committees. So it's a lot going on right now, a lot uh, behind the scenes kinds of things that if you go to the Capitol and you go to the galleries, they may not be working on the floor, but that doesn't mean that they are not getting things done. And then um, <laughs> it was interesting that on yesterday, Wednesday, Mississippi, along with several other states, had about five or six other states had bomb threats. Uh, the one in Mississippi came in sometime to our Secretary of State's office uh, sometime in the seven o'clock hour and they shut things down. Uh, the ant dogs were going through checking from top to bottom, uh, forcing a lockdown in a delay of business the legislators were allowed to come back into the building around 11 a.m. 
It was thoroughly search, searched and no explosive or suspicious equipment were found. Uh, so, but the, uh, the investigation is ongoing and they deem that it is no further threat to the Capitol or surrounding buildings. Now, what one must be concerned about is if this was a test to see what would happen if they got a bomb threat. Now there's security at the Capitol when you come in, generally your bags are, are, are ser searched and they don't like for you to have large bags and you can't take something huge into the gallery and drop it over or something, but you can come in, you might would be able to get something, you could put it in a bathroom somewhere and all of that. So the Capitol Police and the Department of Public Safety have to respond to these uh, threats every time because you can't ever ignore it and then that is the real time. But you must wonder if this is perhaps a test. When they go in, I mean, they, there's a real opportunity to inflict damage because you've got 122 people in one chamber, you got 52 in another chamber, plus all of the staff and that makes things happen for them on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this time of the session is also a time where uh, they'll have uh, athletic teams to come in for resolutions. They may have um, choirs that come in to entertain them and other folk who have represented Mississippi in an outstanding manner. So there are lots and lots of people in a captive audience uh, if someone did try to uh, stash a bomb after they are gone and uh, trigger it at another time. Uh, there were six uh, other states, I believe, that had a bomb threat to include Kentucky, Michigan, Georgia, Montana, and Connecticut. But hopefully we won't have any more of these bomb threats. Hopefully we won't have any uh, terroristic kind of activity to interrupt the duties of the legislators. And another um, political announcement, uh, Commissioner Highway Willie Simmons was elected as the president of that three uh, member commission. They handle your highways. So when you see all this work going on, it just doesn't happen by itself. These commissioners have uh, met and decided what is going to happen next? Where are we going to work? Where's the greatest need? Uh, where are our bridges in trouble? So they have been working and he is now the president of that group uh, for at least this beginning and may last for four years. Additionally, the Hines County Board of Supervisors had their first meeting, their organizational meeting on Tuesday of this week, uh, starting at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, Supervisor Robert Graham from District 1 was elected as the president. He is the most senior member of that board. And then Wanda Evers, who is one of three new members making up a five member board. She is one of three new members and she was elected as the vice president of the Hines County Board of Supervisors. They uh, hired on a replacement for Kenny Wayne Jones, who retired and resigned effective December 31st. So her name is Laura Berry, and she will be in an interim position for 90 days. And then they may continue her own in that position, or they may find someone else um, and they are going to be advertising, I know. So keep your eyes on the Jackson Advocate, the link and the website for the Hines County Board of Supervisors. All four of Mississippi's congressional delegation have announced that they will be seeking reelection in November of 2024. First congressional district member is Trent Kelly. Benny Thompson is the congressperson representing District 2. 
And then we have Michael Guest representing District 3, which is the central Mississippi area. And then from the Gulf Coast, we have Mike Ezell, who is also running for re-election. They will have to qualify by January 15th, 2024. So it is a very short qualifying deadline. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's because they don't want a whole lot of folk running against and trying to decide if they want to run against an incumbent. The first day to be able to qualify was January 2nd, and then you have to finish by January 15th. There will be a primary uh, around the March time frame, and then you will have your uh, general election in November. Also, you know, in this year, we will have presidential candidates, vice presidential candidates on that ballot as well. And in Mississippi, I understand that the Republican Party is pushing to make sure that former President Donald Trump will be on the ballot in Mississippi. Um, don't know who their nominee will be, but chances are it will be the former president. We'll be right back after this break. 